Hey, we've been telling you about the three men arrested during the pro-Cuba freedom protests here in Tampa on Tuesday night. Two of them are the first from the area to be charged related to our governor, Ron DeSantis' new anti-riot law. Joining us now on the hotline, Tampa criminal defense attorney Michael Maddox. And Michael, what does this mean now for these two that have been charged in this new anti-riot law? Well, good morning. It basically means that they are going to be held and have been held past what a typical person's uh, right to have a bond posted would be. The new law uh, allows people accused of rioting to be held until an initial appearance. Typically, if you were arrested, you'd have an opportunity to post bond with a bonds person and get out in a couple hours. In this case, they had to spend the night and wait for an initial hearing. It's kind of interesting. If you burglarize a car or commit grand theft, you can get your bond posted and get out in a couple hours. But if you peaceably assemble, um, in, in theory, if that's what they were doing, then you can't get out if you get arrested until you see the judge. Uh, do you think that's what they were doing when you bring up the word peacefully? And I think that's an important word when we talk about these protests, because a lot of them last night we saw very peaceful. But from what we're hearing, what happened on Tuesday, a lot of it not so peaceful. They were trying to take over the interstate. Often they hurt officer and officer as well. So that to me isn't peaceful. I would agree with you on that in terms of the allegations. Now we have to see what happens. I think overall the nature of the protest was a, a clear exercise of peaceful assembly to um, talk about what's happening in Cuba, which is obviously important to the American people and our large Cuban population in Tampa. But if you, um, you know, strike an officer or commit an act of violence, then it is going to result in you being arrested because the key word is peaceful. Yeah, I think uh, people in the Tampa Bay area were very much in favor of what they were protesting, what they were doing, and yet they let it get out of hand. And uh, it seems they should have understood that they were going to turn people against them, like BLM did last year, uh, that they were going to turn people against them when they blocked highways, and especially in trying to get onto the interstate to block that. And that was just crazy because, again, they had most of Tampa on their side, 100%. Well, I do think that the manner and means of how you practice the assembly is important. And look, we all use labels at different times. It's clear if you don't maybe like the message of the assembly, it might be called a riot. If you like it, it's probably just a protest. But there are physical actions that these groups take that can change the characteristics. And that's why when the police are there, you should follow their routing and things like that, because obviously getting on to I-275 is going to create a, a huge safety issue for protesters, motorists, and that's what the police were trying to prevent. But sometimes, it, I guess, it's the inertia of these groups, and they start to do things that are not necessarily thought out, but that shouldn't destroy the message. Uh, I mean, it's clear even DeSantis, who passed this law that's going to impact some of the protesters is not in favor of the Cuban government and is advocating for better internet down there and trying to stand up for the Cuban people and that's important and that's what the protesters were doing so as you said at the beginning let's hope the message doesn't get lost because the assembly got um, maybe a little rough on the edges we'll say. My question is will this be appealed will it end up in appellate court this anti-riot law well i think these are protesters who are some of the first people to be uh, impacted by it and i do think depending if they have standing meaning if parts of the law that were unconstitutional affected them then they are going to be candidates if they want to you know carry that weight i mean you have to have a client who's willing to go all the way and contest constitutionality uh, to protect their rights and your rights and my rights, but because there has to be a substantial government interest, and I don't see there being one because you can criminalize this conduct, and that makes sense, but it doesn't make sense to say that you can't get a bond until the initial appearance just because you were involved in a riot. The test for bond is, are you at risk of flight, I and mean, are you a danger to the community? And you can assess, you can post a bond on almost any offense. Um, there are a few no-bond offenses, but they're certainly not things that are triggered by misdemeanors, typically, because they, the trigger for this is misdemeanor offenses on some of the counts. Not all, but some. And so I think it's important to look at 
whether or not we are penalizing a certain class of people unjustifiably just because some of the Black Lives Matter protests got out of hand and now the law is looking at getting the next protesters. I think it's ironic that the message of these protesters is something that DeSantis supports, but yet the protesters are getting arrested. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here moving forward. Michael Maddox, a Tampa criminal defense attorney. Michael, do you have a website people can check out? Yes, Maddox Attorneys, and we actually have a new protest section on there, so thanks. We'll check it out, Maddox Attorneys. Thank you, Michael. We'll catch up with you a little later.